For those wondering where Christopher Steele is, we don't know. But his name is back in the news, linked below, because ex-KGB General Oleg Erovinkin has been found dead in a car in Moscow. Oh my God, Putin is a monster. No wonder Mr. Steele has gone into hiding. Or, more accurately, ex-KGB General Oleg Erovinkin was found dead in a car in Moscow on Boxing Day. But no matter, Christo Grozev, an expert on Russia-related security threats of Risk Management Lab, a think tank in Bulgaria, has said, I have no doubt that at the time Erovinkin died, Mr. Putin had Mr. Steele's Trump dossier on his desk. He would arguably have known whether the alleged story is based on fact or fiction. Or indeed, if he had the dossier on his desk. And while we're on the subject of Russia, at PMQs the other day, Sir Gerald Howarth popped up to ask a question about Ukraine. There was nothing particularly odd about the question. It was pretty standard. A conservative backbencher pops up to toss the Prime Minister a dolly for her to whack over the boundary for a useful four to keep the scoreboard ticking over. What made it odd was that according to Guido Fawkes, link below, who is usually pretty accurate on such things, Sir Gerald was not down on the list for a question. Also odd was that PMQs began with a welcome to the Speaker of the Burmese Parliament, who was there no doubt to see how democracy is done proper. But hang on, isn't Burma supposed to be called Myanmar these days? So why are they all calling it Burma? Luckily, The Guardian didn't notice this or they would have had an opinion piece as to why this is a sign that Brexit hails a return to the British Empire. It would be remiss of me not to mention Burma without a link to my favourite Kipling poem, link below. And I also noticed this headline in the Washington Post, link below. Asia's version of Aleppo is beginning, is happening in Burma. What? Western-backed Islamic fighters posing as terrorists causing mayhem and murder in the name of regime change? Surely not. But back to Mr. Howarth, who is rather litigious, having once sued the BBC for a panorama programme called Maggie's Militant Tendency, so... If I say the word allegedly rather a lot, you will understand why. Oh, and just to mention, Mr. Howarth was also tricked into appearing on the Brass Eye spoof Peter Geddon, link below. But of more significance, Mr. Howarth is chair of the All-Party Group on Ukraine. He is also on the All-Party Group on Egypt. And as such, he takes fairly regular trips to both countries. Between 2010 and 2012, he was Minister for International Security Strategy, which would no doubt explain why he states his interests, link below, as military aircraft, warships and Quinit IQ. In case you're wondering Quinnit IQ is not some new form of corn it is a British defence company link below offering what I believe is called a full spectrum service also of interest is Mr Howarth's business contacts we can ignore the £300 he received for giving a speech at Roxton College and while interesting, his business consulting for Sigma Energy, link below, was not what caught my eye. No, what sparked my interest was Blenheim Capital Services Limited, link below, 
and I was also intrigued that Blenheim Capital Services Limited have in the past paid for the tea and sausage rolls at trilateral meetings. Link below. Oh, and earlier in the week, Mr. Howarth was a guest speaker at an event of the British Ukrainian Society, link below, that got a little bit out of hand. Speaking of MPs with foreign connections, Labour MP Tulip Sadiq was in the news this week after resigning from the Labour front bench to vote against Article 50. Ms Sadiq is the granddaughter of Banga Bandahu Sheikh Mujabur Rahman, link below, and was famously photographed with her mother and Mr Putin at the signing of a $1 billion arms contract between Bangladesh and Russia. Oh, and as part of the deal, the Russians will also supply Bangladesh with a $4 billion nuclear power plant. Link below. Right, let me just check the uh, the official certified fake news Bible. Uh, Labour MP with links to Putin. Uh -huh. Uh, voting against Article 50. Yes, that means that the Russians are behind the Remain vote. Stupid book. By the way, for those without a map, Bangladesh is next door to Burma. Link below. And my apologies for the unhinged BBC reference to Donald Trump in that link. It is currently... De rigueur, apparently. <laughs>